Hey everybody, this is my 125 gallon tank and today I want to talk a little bit about schooling fish versus shoaling fish and what's the difference between the two, how do you deal with them in your tanks, so on and so forth. And the reason I'm talking about this is because someone mentioned recently that my lone Congo Tetra that's in this tank, if we come down to this end of the tank, we can see she's just kind of hanging out down here at the moment she will often group together with the rainbow fish we were just looking at but this morning she's been down here in this end and she's the last of my Congo Tetras and somebody suggested the other day that she needs some company but the thing is when you get a group of schooling fish let's just say you get five or six neon Tetras for example over time, those tetras are going to start to die off. Now, do you replace them so that you've always got five neon tetras in the tank? I've got to go back down to this end of the tank so I can actually stand away from the waterfall tank a little bit. If you replace your two dead neon tetras or skirt tetras or whatever, you're basically dooming yourself to always having a school of skirt tetras in that tank or neon tetras or whatever. You'll never ever be able to not have that school of fish if you do that. And when I first started keeping fish, I did that. I would get some skirt tetras or something. One or two of them would die off. I would replace them. And over time, I began to realize that I might like to try some other fish at some point in the future. And I'm never going to be able to do that if I keep replacing every single skirt tetra that dies. So, eventually, you just get to the point where you just start letting them fade away. If some die off, then they die off. And eventually, you're down to two and then one. And then you don't have any more skirt tetras or neons or whatever. And then you can put something else in your tank. And that is my situation with my last Congo Tetra down there. When I originally got my Congo Tetras, I got them at the same time I got my Tenopoma and my now deceased Synodontis. I started up my African tank. And over time, I did start to lose some Congo Tetras. And I did replace those Congo Tetras because at that time, I wanted to continue having a school of Congo Tetras. I didn't want them to fade away just then. But as time went on, I decided I would like to convert this to more of a rainbow fish themed tank, which I'm doing. And as such, I've stopped replacing the Congo Tetras. As they've died off, I've simply let that school fade away. And I'm down to one left. She's an old fish. When she passes away, that'll be the end of my Congo Tetras for now. I'm not saying I won't ever get any more in the future. They're great fish. But right now, I just want to do something different. And that's the only real choice you have other than taking them out of your tank and rehoming them or something like that. So the question about whether or not you replace schooling fish as they die is going to be up to you. As far as is it good or bad for the fish or whatever, first of all, let's clarify the distinction between schooling fish and shoaling fish. A schooling fish is probably what you're thinking. It's a bunch of fish that all get together in a group. They all sort of behave as one unit. They swim in the same direction. When one hangs a left, they all hang a left. And they dart and dash as this sort of one big fluid moving mass. And when you've seen, you know, large schools of fish, it's really, really impressive sight. And, of course, even just seeing a small uh, school of fish swimming together is pretty enough. Now, what a shoaling fish is, is something much more like my clown loaches down here, or a Corydoras catfish is another good example of a shoaling fish. That is a big group of fish that is very clearly a cohesive group, but they don't move as one unit. If you've ever watched Corys, if you've ever seen a big group of Corys on the bottom of someone's tank or even in the wild, they're all rummaging around doing their own little thing, but they're doing so in a big group. They're all very aware of the fact that they are there collectively as a group of fish, but they're not behaving as one single unit. That's more akin to what a shoal is than a school. So with the behavior you'll get with the schooling fish, 
they say you should have, say, five skirt tetras, and you should keep five to seven of these together in the tank. Well, what happens if you don't? You know, I get a lot of people that seem to think that the fish are going to be lonely or sad or dejected or something like that, and that's just not really how it works. The reason that keeping five of them is suggested is because their natural behavior is dependent upon being in a group. So if you've got one of them by itself, it's not going to have its natural uh, interactions with its other members of its school. And so it might act out on aggression. It might, um, you know, chase other fish around. It might nip at the fins of some other fish. But you give it four or five more of its own kind, and now it moves into a school, and suddenly all that behavior goes towards social interactions within the school, um, you know, hierarchy, pecking order kind of stuff, and suddenly that fish stops nipping at the fins of your other fish or it stops dashing and darting and swimming around the tank or whatever, you know. So the behavior is going to change, but not the mood of the fish per se. Again, they're not going to be sad. They're not going to go to bed lonely at night because they don't have any other of their own kind in the tank. So it's not for those reasons that you need to keep a group of them together. And I'm even using the word need, um, you know, selectively. You don't really need to keep a group of them. I've got a couple of tanks where I have one lonely little neon, or I've got the one lonely little, you know, uh, Congo Tetra in this tank. Um, but again, that's where you're going to get your difference in behavior. Where I've noticed the difference is with the shoaling fish. I've never really had a problem with keeping quarries individually, but I have had an issue keeping loaches individually. Um, keeping loaches individually, they will be very reclusive, uh, they can be aggressive, and they just don't behave the same at all. As soon as you put a small group of them together, they in immediately begin interacting with each other and they become a lot more outgoing. Uh, when I first started keeping fish, I bought one uh, striated bodia or a zebra loach, and I never saw the thing. It just hid constantly. It stayed in a little cave I had made for it. It never came out, and eventually I learned that it was supposed to be in a small group, and I got five more of them, and as soon as I put the other five in the tank, I'm not kidding, within minutes... I had all of them out and swimming around and interacting with each other and darting and swimming around the tank, and I've never looked back. I've always tried to keep my loaches in groups. I right now have a blue loach or a red tail loach, depending on what you want to call it, same thing. And we rarely see it, and it's fairly aggressive, and again, it's one that I did not know. Uh, again, at the time when I bought it, that loaches really ought to be kept in groups. I don't think any loach out there is really... Um, good kept singularly they're all better in groups now my skunk loaches they can be a little aggressive especially if it's a small group if you've only got two or three they can be kind of jerks uh, but if you get a large group and i used to have eight of them i never had an issue with them when i had a large group they always just darted and dashed around the tank chasing each other around playing their little cat and mouse games and never had an issue now that i'm getting down again over time i'm down to two, uh, three of them in there and three of them is a little different. They chase each other around somewhat, but they also spend a lot of time kind of harassing my other fish. So, again, you know, do I add more loaches and build that group back up? Or do I let nature take its course and just let that little group fade away until I don't have them in there anymore and just deal with it in the meantime? So... That's going to generally be up to the individual fish keeper and, you know, what your goals are long term and what you'd like to do. If you want to keep, you know, Congo Tetras in your tank for the next 10 years, then yes, buy more fish as they start to die off. If you're looking to change it up and you want to see something different, then stop buying new fish when they die off and just let them fade away and eventually you'll have room for new fish because again your fish are not going to go to bed lonely uh, at the worst case scenario you're going to get some you know different or maybe unusual behavior you might get a little bit of aggressive behavior a little bit of fin nipping or something like that but that's probably going to be the most extreme you're going to see by keeping fish uh, in groups that are smaller than they should be so those are my thoughts i can't really think of anything else uh, to add to that topic i'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe while you're at it. You never know what you're going to get with me. 
And don't forget, of course, this one here is my 125-gallon tank. So thanks again. I'll see you real soon in the next one.